Good afternoon. Welcome to the edition of the Richard Urban Show. We bring you news and views from God's point of view. And today we're very happy to have part 10 of our series on absolute sexual ethics. And we're very happy to welcome Roy Ramey as our guest today. So please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, Richard, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, my name is Roy Ramey, and I live in uh, Lesage, West Virginia. And, uh, and in Lesage, I operate a farm, a small place. And uh, in addition to that, I'm a soldier in the Army Reserves. That's been an important part of my life uh, for uh, 32 years now and still going. So, And then in addition to all that, uh, I do some uh, building and engineering work. Uh, so I kind of have a well-rounded mix of, uh, of a lot of things that's a uh, part of my life. Uh, I'm married to uh, a wonderful woman, Fran, and, uh, and I have a young daughter uh, that uh, I'm very happy to be raising. Wow, super. Well, we're talking about the family root and absolute sexual ethics. Actually, the whole title is a family root and absolute sexual ethics, which is a model for God's absoluteness, peace, and ideal in the global kingdom. All right, so I'll share the screen and then we'll have our reading and then we can uh, discuss it. The era after the coming of heaven that God and true parents have opened is a time of dramatic change. You have the mission to make this era blossom and bear fruit in blessing and glory. Therefore, please become heaven's emissaries, fulfilling the dual missions of the Peace Kingdom Police Force and the Peace Kingdom Corps. Serve you may under the banner of the Universal Peace Federation, which is working to take up the role of an able type United Nations worthy citizens of the world. If not you, then who will nurture and protect the blessed families in this blessed planet Earth that God has given us? Ladies and gentlemen, I have said that in the era after the coming of heaven, we must recover the true lineage that was lost when Adam fell by receiving the marriage blessing through the true parents. The province of the blessing should be perfected through five stages, the individual, the family, the tribe, the race, and the nation. In this way, let us fulfill our divine mission as blessed families in the era after the coming of heaven by restoring and establishing the ideal three-generation family on the world level. This is the same purpose for which Jesus came to the earth and which he sought to accomplish before passing from this world. Therefore, I am now leading all tribal and national messiahs to unite and bring to a final end the improper relationship between the political sphere, representing the Cain realm, and the religious sphere, representing the Abel realm. The Mongolian People's Federation, representing 74% of the world's population, should bear in mind that the providential age is now upon us in which it should fulfill its duties by restoring the world through the marriage blessing on the national level. This will bring to close the conflict between Cain and Abel, which began in humankind's first family. Ladies and gentlemen, the providential time has now come when we have the mission to unite the two sons, Cain and Abel, it is by true parents' love that they can become one. Then, having recovered their original positions, they should dedicate the restored original ideal family before the true parents, the king and queen of peace in heaven and earth. Please take to heart and engrave it, this in your mind. You are living at a time when God gives you the mission to restoring the true ideal family to offer before heaven the realm of the sibling's love and the right of ownership that were given over to Satan through the fall of our human ancestors. You are now advancing into the era of liberation and complete inner freedom, which is a providential era of the realm of the heart of the fourth Adam. Put another way, it is the era after the coming of heaven. This is a time when metaphorically speaking, the sun is directly overhead, such that no shadow is cast. This signifies that we have passed through the era before the coming of heaven, which include the old, new and complete testament ages these errors have required immeasurable restitution and atonement in order to recreate the ideal the present time however corresponds to the era prior to adam's fall the era of building the original ideal world it refers to the era of true love that is all-encompassing all-powerful and has overall authority it is the realm of heart in which the spirit world and the physical world are bound together as a unified realm centering on true parents, the king and queen of peace. In other words, it is the heir of the kingdom of peace and unity in heaven and on earth. Please become true princes and princesses who live in attendance to God as your true parent, for he is the peace king of the multitudes. Let us build the everlasting peace kingdom by tending true parents, 
who have been enthroned as the king and queen of peace in heaven and earth in the realm of eternal liberation and complete inner freedom, where there is no need for the Savior, Messiah, or Lord at his second coming, and fulfill the dutiful way of a true devoted child, a patriot, a saint, and a member of the family of God's sons and daughters. By following God's commandment to maintain absolute sexual purity, let's establish exemplary families, inherit true parents' victory of restoring through indemnity the realm of three generations, and perfect the world as it would have been but for the fall. Let's establish a model ideal family to bring the complete settlement of the universal ideal realm of liberation and complete inner freedom and the kingdom of goodness in which we can enjoy a time of absolute, unique, unchanging, and eternal peace and prosperity, and which can become the homeland of peace in heaven and on earth that can be praised for all eternity. May God's everlasting blessing be upon your family, your nation, and the world. Thank you. So that ends our reading. Yeah, I'd love to get your initial comments on that. Well, you know, Richard, uh, I try to uh, relate things uh, that, that I'm looking at, particularly in, in the physical world. Uh, you know, our mission is right here. Uh, I try to relate things to farming, and, and there's always some allegory to make a comparison there. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that I've learned is in order to grow good food, healthy food, whether it's a plant or an animal that we're using for our own food, uh, it has to have a good quality environment in order to grow properly. Uh, it has to be rich in nutrients. And so we start with good soil when we're talking about farming. Okay. And so when we're talking about uh, people, we also need a healthy environment that's based on ethics. Uh, it's kind of like our soil that uh, we have to have that rich uh, environment of ethics in order to live properly and fulfill God's commandment. That's kind of the start of that. Yeah, I mean, amen to that. I mean, that that's absolutely, you know, true. I mean, so yeah, I mean, that's the whole like premise of this series has been, you know, the family root and absolute sexual ethics and talking about the importance of the family and, you know, the commandment and absolute, uh, you know, obedience to God's commandment, like save sex for marriage and have fidelity in that realm. And, you know, so much more. So I agree with you on that. I love your soil analogy. It's like, you know, the unification teaching says that the spirit grows on the soil effectively of the physical body, meaning like your spirit grows when you do good deeds. So I agree totally with you. You're like the mission field is here on earth and that's where you'll grow your spirit that lives for eternity. Right. You know, and to that uh, point, uh, I've, I've often thought about, and I've had discussions with some other folks of, you know, why do we live physically here on earth if we're ultimately going to have an eternal life as a spirit? You know, why, why even have this physical piece? And, and it seems to be uh, that this is our, our practice, so to speak, for the eternal spiritual life, where, uh, you know, how we live on earth uh, based on the things that we do uh, that we practice, how we treat each other, how we love our God uh, and each other uh, is, a, is a practice for how we should transform into that spirit world that we really don't fully understand here. But uh, if we're doing good things here, then we're ready to transition into that other life. Seems I totally to agree with that. I mean, that, that is really true. We're growing ourselves and god gave us this opportunity on earth i believe to build those two great commandments of loving god and loving our neighbor and you show you love god by loving your neighbor right right you know yes. and uh, back to the cain and the abel uh, allegory that's in here uh you know that has so much that uh teaches us uh how how things should not have been yet how it was and uh and how it should be so you know, there was a jealousy there uh, mm -hmm. between an older brother and a younger brother. And, uh, and the, you know, Cain acted on that jealousy instead of uh, acting in love and uh, trying to learn how to be a better person that he could, uh, he could grow in his love and pleasing God. Uh, he fell to the jealousy and ended up killing his brother, uh, which obviously we know from the story was 
not the proper way to uh, to handle that situation. <laughs> so. Yeah, interesting. That's in our daily inspiration scripture reading for the last yesterday and today. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, and it's interesting the way you know Father Rev Moon talks about it too is that he says in this speech we should end the improper relationship between the political and the um, religious realm. How relevant. I mean, so we have this battle going on. And if you've been listening to my blogs, you know, of course, I'm supporting President Trump and truth and honesty. But there's an, even this greater battle in a sense that, you know, the political sphere has become dominant over the religious. How so? Well, look at all the COVID stuff. And even uh, Ms. McElhaney just talked about this, I think, one or two days ago, you know, about how there was a victory in the Supreme Court of, you know, Cuomo not shutting down the churches. Well, that's very important because that should never happen. Political realm should never be over the God-centered or religious realm. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? You know, uh, I, I, just because of my nature of discussion, I get into a lot of political <laughs> political debates with people and you know a lot of places that you go people don't want to get political and what i've learned is everything is political uh no matter what it is so uh i guess uh i guess because of our environment we don't have a healthy ethical environment uh we have even turned religion political or at least our secular world against the uh um I guess is an infringement against our religion, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, it's all political, unfortunately. Yeah, it so should somehow, be. Yeah, we have to restore this. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's mentioned here the Peace Kingdom uh, Police Force and Peace Kingdom Corps. And those are kind of, you know, you might call them unificationist terms. I call myself a unificationist because I, you know, have been following Reverend Moon for a long time. But it's not just I'm following Reverend Moon. He really teaches us to be autonomous. Like, you know, it's very much... If you give it a political analogy, I think it's like, you know, Jefferson. He was into this autonomous, you know, and you probably relate to that as a farmer. As far as I know, correct me wrong. He said, you know, we should be able to grow our own food, be able to, you know, have this very decentralized kind of system. All that, you know, being said, you know, this idea that peace kingdom, police force. Some people might think, oh, that means you carry around guns. Well, I mean, first of all, it's fine to carry around a gun, and you, it's a good thing to be a good citizen. But that's really, I don't think, what it means in essence. The real thing that the world is lacking, and even if a, a physical battle broke out, it would still be lacking the ideology that unites people, you know, meaning that you need to teach people about these kind of sexual ethics and about, and even like, you know, we talk about Cain Abel, it's easy to say, oh, you know, Republicans are more able, Democrats are Cain. Well, probably that's sort of true, but really we're all in a sense Cain before Jesus, before God, and we need to kind of somehow unite those realms of, of uh, Cain and Abel. And it's not just the idea that one blows up the other or annihilates it. So, um, yeah, so I think this police force idea is we got to bring out some kind of ideology kind of like, I believe, honestly, it's unifications over this kind of teaching we're studying that can unite the various realms. It's not just a religious doctrine. Yes, it's God-centered, but there's a difference between something that's godly or God-centered and, you know, quote-unquote, a particular religion. Or I don't know if you have any thoughts on all I've been saying. Oh, my gosh. There's, uh, there's a lot of thoughts that come through that uh, discussion. I guess uh, let me start with saying that uh, uh, and I subscribe to the conservative side of the political realm, although yes. I'm more libertarian than anything, and, and let each person decide for themselves as long as they're not harming somebody else. And that's ultimately, and there, that's a lot of spiritual teachings, religious teachings that even goes back to Jesus on that. But uh, uh, as much as I subscribe to the conservative side, I would never give the Republicans the uh, the moniker or equivalent of being able, which is supposed to be the representative. <laughs> of the yeah, I misspoke. No, I was. Yeah. You're right. I wasn't trying to imply it. But I just kind of make a general statement. But go ahead. Right. I I can see, I can see where a lot of people might make that correlation. Certainly, the Republicans have their failings as well. Oh yes. You know, because because they're political. <laughs> Anything in the political world is going to have a failing. Uh, it's going to be based on Satan uh, ultimately. But anyway. 
Uh, nevertheless, it's, you know, society, uh, culture, kingdoms are all a, uh, a system of a lot of people, a lot of families, a lot of bigger groups, so to speak. And before you can have any of those, you know, kingdoms or cultures, it, you have to start with a good foundation. And just like the foundation of a soil as individual molecules within that soil, you have nutrients that are individual molecules. You have carbon that's in there. You have molecules of water. You have small bacteria and so forth that all work together. Each of them has to do their own thing right before they can work together as a soil that can grow a plant that an animal eats and so forth. So it comes down to the individual. And, uh, and just like our families, before we can have a strong family, the individual has to be rooted in ethics, uh, including sexual ethics. And so when you, when you follow that path of, of spiritual rightness, uh, according to what God has commanded us to do and how we should live as an individual, then we can be an effective husband or wife within that initial family unit. And then we can create uh, children. And, you know, if we're not rooted in ethics ourselves as an individual, then how can we lead our children in that ethical uh, growth uh, for themselves to now have an ethical family? And if we're not an ethical family uh, that's, you know, rooted in God's commandments, then how can we be an ethical society that can work together? So you see where I'm going there. It all goes downhill if you're not rooted as an individual, uh, you know, in that, in that good, strong ethics. And yeah, if you are, I, and, I and there's enough of us, then we can guide our society and, you know, be our society. You're always going to have those outcasts. Mm -hmm. We're always going to have that cane amongst us. Uh, you know, there's some people say there's that 10% factor of, you know, one in 10 is going to be a scumbag in our society. And that's just statistically how it goes. As long as the other nine are, are good, upright people, mm -hmm. uh, we can overcome that one out of 10. So uh, uh, we just need to make sure that the environment is right, that, uh, that we are teaching that nine out of 10, uh, you know, what is the proper way to live and, and how they should treat each other. Uh, and I think that was the example that Jesus came to set. Uh, you know, that's why God sent him here to be that example for us. Um, I agree. And so forth. Um, so yeah. anyway, it starts with the individual and, and grows into the whole society. And I agree with that. Yeah. The, and the individual and family. So, yeah, I guess the one thing is, you know, when you talk about politics, people always try it out, whether it's, you know, Democrats are from their God believers, whatever. But, you know, it, it has to be like put practically into daily life. Like you said, sexual ethics. So there we see, you know, obviously divide politically, mostly. But it didn't used to be that way. I mean, as far as I know, like President John F. Kennedy was against abortion. So I don't know. You know, so it used to be both sides had some at least <laughs> ethical standards. No, I mean, there's still good people on all sides. But you know what I'm saying. It's kind of gotten sure. really really crazy i think people are rooted in goodness generally but they allow themselves to be pulled into uh you know unethical practices you mentioned there about abortion uh you know we've allowed that to uh, uh to model what people think and you know which side uh you know that's literally tearing our culture apart uh, on that as just one topic alone um very few people did that before. And, you know, uh, Kennedy was a Democrat, but he was a Catholic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's certainly not a Catholic principle to, uh, to allow abortion. So uh, not really a Democrat or a Republican thing from on back. It was just what is right and what is wrong. And uh, they believe that was wrong. Yeah, I, I agree. So I comes, agree. You know, that, back to the, uh, uh, you know, our government is made up of, or as a reflection of our culture, mm. really. You know, I've been in the military for 32 years. And wow, thank you. For many, th appreciate it. I've said for many years that our military is a reflection of the culture that our soldiers come from. You know, we come from all walks of life. And we even, in the U.S. military, we have folks who are from other countries who want to earn their citizenship to the U.S. 
and they end up serving in the U.S. military for a time to earn that. Uh, so we're not even just made up of U.S. citizens. We're made up of folks from other countries as well. So there's a lot of diversity amongst us, uh, yet we're a reflection of our culture. Used to, you could pretty much say, and for the most part, we still are. Uh, I would say that we are a reflection mostly of the better elements of our culture. Uh, you know, we don't have a bunch of murderers and thieves amongst the military, um, although we do have some. You know, that 10% factor fits in with us as well. Uh, so our government, likewise, is a reflection of our culture. And when the individuals who make up our families, who make up our communities, who make up our government are corrupt, then our government is going to become corrupt. And so uh, on that basis, uh, you know, back to the abortion or, uh, uh, you know, environmental issues or whatever it is, uh, you know, it comes down to corrupt individuals and we have too much corruption of individuals within our society. And that's regardless of their specific religion or faith or political background. Uh, you know, we're just, we're a corrupt society of individuals in general. <laughs> yeah. So one of the guests, part six, was talking about like how, you know, the reason, and now I see a lot of people have stepped forward. You know, I've been following mostly a lot of these hearings. I just did a bit, uh, show yesterday about different clips from that. But point being, you know, how could they see these things? and let it go by because the conscience can become dead. Now, I have to say many people did step forward, but then again, there's a lot more who didn't. So they saw these things, but regardless of whether Democrat, Republic, or Republican or independent or other, then if they had a conscience, and th there are many people came forward, like to say, Ted Hamma, hey, Democrat, this is wrong. But still many did not. So the conscience was dead. And I would posit even that death of the conscience, it does connect back to the basic ethics, like these absolute sexual ethics, because I think that's at the very core of it. What do you think? Yes, I totally agree. Yeah. You so, know what? Go ahead. No, go ahead, sir. No, no. I was just going to say, I mean, there are other interesting concepts here, but yeah, like uh, restoring the right relationship between, um, you know, politics and uh, government. But like you say, if there's enough righteous people, it should happen. Like this, you pray of uh, this one preacher, Lance Wall now, he's into, you know, being more active in um, politics and different areas of society. And um, so he's uh, talking about that. But um, yeah, if enough righteous people like that get involved, presumably we should have, you know, less corruption and, and things like that. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know, and it, I think a lot of it has to do with um, who we see our mentors. So, you know, as, as take me as a young man growing up, uh, I have certain people that I look up to, uh, you know, my dad, my grandfather and an uncle and, you know, other people, you know, we got our superheroes, uh, you know, our, our comic superheroes. Those are embodiments of what we think are good values, uh, you know, in a, in essential in essence, it's a, it's a teaching mechanism of, you know, how we should be and what we should look up to. And so we look up to these idyllic people that uh, should have positive influence on us. Uh, and then we look to, to uh, evil creatures, you know, like Satan and, you know, the embodiment of the, of the evil that we should not be. Uh, and, you know, we should learn from those. And uh, sometimes we have those, uh, those situations. I'm going to relay a, a story myself here from a few years ago, uh, okay. I was, uh, I was presiding, uh, over a, uh, a fraternal organization and, and I was still learning, uh, even though I was the presiding officer of that organization, but, a uh, a more senior member, uh, that I looked up to, uh, tried to convince me that, uh, uh, there was a particular, um, uh, action that needed to be made that was, not popular, uh, and it went against our ethics, I guess you'd say, ultimately. And, uh, and I was the guy that had to decide how we were going to move forward on that. And this, uh, this older gentleman who I respected tried to sway me to a particular 
way of thinking and mm -hmm. almost to doing something ethically wrong in our organization. It would have violated our rules in the organization. And, uh, and initially, because of my respect and admiration of him, I started to follow his advice uh, as, well, he's a wise older fellow that, that I respect, and I'm going to go that direction. And, and as I, I got back inside of me and, you know, my ethics were pulling on me, <laughs> you know, I had that, that angel on my shoulder telling me something isn't right here, and I had to step back and reevaluate what direction we were going mm -hmm. and, and ultimately did not follow uh, that gentleman's direction. Uh, and I'm glad I didn't, but I was being pulled in there because of the admiration and respect that I had for him. Mm. And generally he was a good man. He wasn't an evil man that was pulling me. He just, he got caught up in some passion and, and, uh, 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 emotion, I guess, rather than let's go back and, and do something ethically. So it all comes down to, uh, you know, be ethical, and follow those ethics even when it's tough. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think you're right. And also, you know, interesting thing about this reading is it talks, you know, about the era after the coming of heaven, and this is a high noon. So in light of everything that's going on, or just more than just what's going on politically, your personal life. I mean, personally, you know, as a person of faith, I believe that's true. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's challenging to look at it, I can throw in some comments in a minute about it, but like right now and say, oh my gosh, what's going on? But do you believe that, you know, that's a statement that's being made, you know, that, you know, the kingdom of heaven is here if we're willing to understand it. And, you know, it, you know, it's, and also the high noon culture means that evil will be exposed, I believe, like metaphorically, like no shadows. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I actually like that uh, that metaphor exactly because uh, and there's some other organizations that I'm part of that you know just like uh, uh, just like my church we talk about the light being something that exposes uh, everything you know there's there's truth in light uh, you don't hide behind anything because there's no darkness and so I really like that uh, metaphor in there and and uh, yeah you know uh, we're the heaven on earth right here and whether uh, uh, you know, whether some people are doomsday folks and they, you know, think the end of the world's coming soon or whatever, uh, you know, whether it's coming tomorrow or a thousand more years from now, uh, the heaven on earth is we're to live here. You know, it's back to a comment we talked about earlier about this is our practice for the eternal life. So how we live here determines uh, in some way that we can't quite understand the future of that eternal life. And if we're living immorally here, then in some way or another, that's going to affect our transition into the afterlife, uh, into that eternal life. But if we're living the proper way that, uh, that God wants us to live, uh, I think that's going to make that transition somehow into a way that is pleasing to God uh, toward that eternal life. And, you know, we're going to we're going to dwell with God in heaven, so to speak. Uh, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, it actually, I, my understanding belief is that, you know, you will naturally transition. It's not like, you know, um, it's, uh, how do you say it? I want to say continuous. So if you have a life where you're living in love with your family, your spouse, practicing absolute sexual ethics, then now one thing of, of Reverend says here, and that would, you know, probably for most people who aren't into the unification teaching or just not and not into it, don't know about it. You know, he talks about the marriage blessing. So that's, uh, of course, a blessing is a blessing. But in our terminology, it's more like you should, you know, join God's lineage through the marriage blessing, which is a, like a ceremony. That being said, you should transition naturally into the next world in the state you're in. So if you were this evil, vile person, you're not just going to suddenly be another. And if you are a decent person, you know, and, you know, now I do understand, you know, the idea of salvation. So, you know, we believe in our belief in Jesus Christ and, you know, spiritually, but also I believe physically you should receive this blessing. But all I'm saying is I think you're right in the sense, in summary, that, you know, it's a transition. You know, you're making heaven here and it'll be a transition to the next world. It's not like two separate things. Or do you have any thoughts on that? 
Right. You know, and I think that uh, it's not about perfection per se, but it's the pursuit of perfection. Uh, you know, no, none of us uh, are totally, uh, totally ethical without uh, some sin in our lives. Uh, that's just part of being human. Uh, you know, there was, there was Enoch, uh, apparently, and he was taken up to heaven without dying, and, uh, and there was Jesus amongst us. Uh, but, uh, but most of us are not that perfect without sin human beings. So, uh, but it's about the pursuit of trying to live your life, you know, perfection, uh, ethically perfect, and you have to try. And if you're not trying, you know, if you're a thief, uh, if you're harming other people, uh, you're, you're doing wrong to other people as a way of doing business, uh, it's, you're not going to transition into that afterlife in a, in a proper manner. Uh, but if you're living, at least striving for perfection, uh, you know, you'll never get there. But if you strive, then you're certainly going to get closer. Uh, if you're not trying, you're never going to get, you know, even close to it. So you have to at least try uh, and follow, uh, uh, you know, follow those ethics. And they're really simple. Uh, you know, it comes down to the golden rule. Uh, and, and previous to that, in our Old Testament, we had all these different laws that told us how to live. And it's maybe because men were uh, were more infantile in their understanding, so they had to have a lot of rules. It's like a child. You know, you can't just tell them to treat everybody well. Right. Uh, you have to give them a lot of rules. I agree. Uh, you know, so, because they don't understand everything. And then when they get older, then you simplify the rules and you let them uh, apply that to all the situations in their life. And it's kind of like that with us. Uh, simple rules, just apply it well in all the parts of your life. Yeah, I, I, that makes I sense? agree with that. Yeah, so I think we are in a, an exciting time. I was even talking, I was just driving here, talking to you know, my wife, Stacy, like, hey, I see a positive part in all this craziness. And so we were talking about, well, the thing is, say, you know, President Trump had just won, maybe all this corruption would never come out. I mean, I believe he will, first of all, I want to say emphatically, I do believe he will win. He has won and he will win. So everybody out there do keep persevering. But even more, I want to say that, um, you know, the good thing is that this is like exposing all this over-the-top corruption. Who knows? Maybe if it would have gone through, like squeaked by, like in 2016 or something, we wouldn't have the exposure. So I don't know. It's only God can who truly say in the end whether it's good or bad. You know what I mean? Right, right. You know, that uh, that's the light at high noon uh, trying to expose all of the evil. The, you know, and the other thing is sun is a cleansing agent. Uh, you know, back to the farming thing, you can, have, uh, you can have bad bacteria that thrives in dark places. Uh, you know, that's why we got to have... Uh, uh, proper sanitation in our our food processing centers because they're under a roof, you know, in in damp, dark places. But when you get out in the field where the sun shines, you know, it's really a good, clean place. Absolutely, this that yeah. sun will sanitize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, wow. <laughs> I think you know. Um, yeah, I mean, we covered a lot of topics. I mean, I'm hoping that even, you know, not just, you know, people like myself or Unicase, but more people will uh, study these kind of these words like the Reverend gave and it's called peace messages. There's like, there are 17 of them actually. And that these will help. I think one thing as, you know, God believing people or Christians, we need like some kind of, uh, we need to understand, you know, these basic principles better. You know, not that they're not in the Bible per se, but, you know, it's not completely clear. So I believe there has been or is this new revelation of truth. And I encourage, you know, everybody to study more about it. You can find this speech on our website. And I hope, you know, we have many more discussions like this and that many other people will be talking about this. Because I think it's so needed, these kind of basic moral and ethical principles, you know, especially on absolute sexual ethics is very needed. Any, like... Uh, maybe final thoughts or comments on, on everything we've been talking about? Yeah, you know, it really comes down to personal discipline. And uh, we, you, you have to learn what the right thing is, the right way to live, 
and then you just have to have the personal discipline uh, and it's it's not easy uh, it's it's uh, not simple well it is simple it's just not easy uh, but uh, you have to follow that in your life and uh, and pursue that practice in everything that you do and uh, when you do good things will come to you and and that's ultimately uh, ultimately what it comes down to right so it starts yeah, with your individual and you know family your like your personal you know ethics yeah well i do I so much appreciate you being on this is concluding our 10-part series but really <laughs> it's just the beginning i'm sure i'll have many more series and do tune in i have a blog at least once a week i've been doing it more than once a week i just posted one yesterday on uh, biden supports um cor uh, not corruption but intimidation and <laughs> suppression so check that out talking about all the things going on in the state hearings and all that um yeah, well, again, thank you for your time. I do really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed this, and uh, and I enjoyed uh, what I've learned, too, from reading through the uh, the thesis that you posed out there and uh, shared and looking at uh, some of the other. I had the advantage of watching some of the other uh, speakers before this, and uh, it was great to see some of their perspectives on this as well. So thank you yeah. for putting this whole series together. and. Uh, I appreciate you having me on as a part of it. Yeah, and if you are haven't checked all of them, if you go to a uh, vision route, that's V I S I O N R O T dot org, and click on blog, when you click there, you'll see a sub menu and it says, you know, absolute sexual ethics. And there, for easier references, scrolling through, because some of my things, as you know, are political, you can find all this 10 part series. So um, I do urge you to check it out. You can also find the whole speech there under resources. A, um, peace message 10 or you'll find the absolute sexual ethics speech yeah so again thank you and uh yeah appreciate that so i'm your host richard Urban. i'm coming to you from historic harpersbury uh thank you again uh roy ramey for being on and do be blessed and we will see you next time